Hello, welcome to Mitch's Rant Time. Sure, I talk and you listen. Uh, just as a warning, as always, I do use vulgar language, adult language, in my videos, so your discretion is advised. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on to the rant. Now, uh, the topic for this one is one that's going to be around a lot in the uh, presidential race of 2016, um, sparked by the controversial video about Planned Parenthood. Um, and it sparked a few other topics, and I'm going to try to address them as I go. But um, the main t issue is abortion. And I'm going to go from both a libertarian perspective as well as you know, my own personal views. So to start off, um, as we all know, a few months ago, uh, Planned Parenthood uh, was attributed to some sort of controversial scandal. Um, a uh, mock research team uh, went into Planned Parenthood with a camera and reported for a few hours um, discussing uh, transactions of donated fetal tissue. Now, they edited it to like a smaller version, like a 10 to 30 minute, I can't remember exactly how much, how small the smaller version is. I've seen bits of it, but um, I ended up watching the full, ver full version for myself. Um, but the smaller version was cut out parts that made it look as if um, Planned Parenthood was selling um, leftover fetal tissues from abortions. Now, when you watch the actual video, you realize that it's not that at all. Uh, within the first five minutes, one thing they discuss is the fact that uh, mothers have to consent to the donating of fetal tissue. If they don't consent to it, then they discard it in some other way. Um, I've seen bad things about discarding, but that's a whole other issue for a whole other day. Um, the other thing is uh, they wanted to talk to you later about what would need to be done. And one thing they had mentioned is that they cannot surgically, you know, do what they can to surgically remove and maintain specific tissues. They can't perform a surgery for specifics. Um, what they need to do is have someone who's waiting to examine um, the corpse, I guess we could say, and uh, see what tissues can be salvaged. If the tissues desired can be salvaged, um, then they can be then again, buried, discarded, whatever. And uh, if they can't be salvaged, they will store it. Now, they discussed both paying or training for the person examining, as well as pay paying for the storage. Now, it was either they provide their own storage and their own person trained to do this, or Planned Parenthood gets paid to train someone to do it from Planned Parenthood and they get paid for their storage. So it wasn't getting paid for the, it wasn't like, oh, oh, an 18 month, 18 week fetus, oh, that'll be $300. No, it was, okay, it's gonna be $200 a month to have a 18 by 16 inch by 20 inch space for storage. Um, and uh, if you're gonna provide your own person, we don't charge, but we would charge minimum wage, or let's say maybe twelve dollars an hour. Not minimum wage, twelve dollars an hour. It's an arbitrary number um, for the training and employment of someone to examine um, post procedure um, specimens. And then, of course, paying for transportation as well. So it wasn't all about that. They kept pushing reimbursement, 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 and uh, they talked more about reimbursement for the specific. Um, Areas where costs would be needed for labor, for power, for storage, which any real conservative would, under, would understand is a necessary cost. Um, for anyone who's been in business before, but I would understand that those are not profit costs. Those are not profit costs. If you're a member of a church, um, you realize that your church gets has to pay for power, and you your church doesn't get a free ride. It's not like taxes where it gets a free ride. Um, your church has to pay for power. So you know that they have to take collections or they have to charge anyone who uses the church facility. They have to charge for the power. It's the same fucking principle. It's not a profit for the church. It's to assist the church in keeping its bills level. Now, we have that out of the way. We all know that after this controversy, a lot of people got upset about it. We know why. It was because they don't like abortions. It's not at all because... They want to limit the government 
We don't like abortions. We're looking for a way to do it. It's the same with guns. Liberals like to try and put bans or regulations on magazines, on the type of gun you can own, on the features of the gun, on the on the bullet, what the bullet consists of, how many bullets you can have on your person. That's just an alternative way of taking away your rights. It's the same fucking thing from a different perspective. As I always like to say, you can put any issue into... There, there's, there's a script in how we address it and how we try to take care of it and how we try to... How the authoritarians try to take away our rights. And you could put any issue. You could put anything into that script. Pot, guns, abortion, marriage, um, privacy, whatever. Into the script. I've explained this multiple times at Tea Party meetings. They get pissed off because they can't handle the fact that they're still just Republicans, but they, they're like hipster Republicans. But anyway, that's another issue for another video. So after this, uh, people like Ron, Rand Paul, not Ron Paul, Rand Paul, started this defund Planned Parenthood thing, and uh, they hadn't seen the video. They were just mad about it. They don't like abortion. They took the pussy ass route of saying, well, we'll just leave it to the states, um, which, well, I believe that to a certain point, the states should be able to take care of it. Uh, certain court rulings say, you know, state that there is a certain limitation um, that states cannot cross. So we go into further... Um, He jumped on that and he did the whole uh, defund Planned Parenthood thing. And the thing is, a lot of people don't understand what that means. Um, the federal government does not just give $500,000 or $500 million, whatever they said it was, to Planned Parenthood. That money comes from people with Medicare and Medicaid going to Planned Parenthood, using their services, excluding abortion, and be sending the bill to the federal government because that's how Medicare and Medicaid work. Now, while I not necessarily agree with Medicare and Medicaid, I don't care for the Affordable Care Act, and I think, again, this actually just all attributes to government controlling our health care, controlling our health, instead of offering help, instead of saying, hey, you know, we need to be healthy, so we'll allot X amount of taxes to preventative checkups or, you know, emergency room visits. Nah. We're just going to fucking force you to buy insurance or we'll force you to pay for other people's insurance so we can regulate it. And that's what it is. It's a regulation. It's stating that Medicare and Medicaid are not valid at Planned Parenthood. Now, it's just Planned Parenthood, though. Other family planning centers are good. It's like saying, well, the American dollars don't get at Walmart, but you can still use it at Target and Kmart and Ross and Pier 1 and fucking Costco and every other fucking big-ass chain store. But not Walmart. You're going to hurt Walmart, but the beast will still be there, and another one will take its place. So that's the real thing, too. There's no real actual intelligence. It's just a hot topic. It's just a way to get recognition, name recognition, poll spikes, whatever. And that's all it is, is politics. And the thing is, when you realize that's what it is, you see how stupid, petty, and fucked up it is. And you realize that there's no humanity behind it. There's no moral um, upset about it. And I understand there is somewhat of a moral and ethical kind of gray area, and there definitely should be debate when it comes to the topic of abortion, because that's all that's left. We've talked about how the video's full of shit. There's nothing wrong. We've talked about how um, the Planned Parenthood defunding thing is full of shit. There's nothing wrong. It's not what any logical person would do. We're going to talk about abortion itself. Now, I'm going to weigh both the libertarian logic that I hold for it, as well as my own personal views. Um, but before that, I kind of want to go and do a little bit um, about some of the things I'd like to address. Um, a lot of times we like to debate abortion because, like I said, it is a gray area. Um, I understand that things like humanity, um, murder, uh, rape, a lot of these things are thrown around. Um, I've already given a warning, but this is going to be a very heated as well as graphic discussion, um, a lot of adult issues. So if you are a kid or you are uncomfortable with hearing about such a topic, I would suggest not listening further. So, my own personal views on abortion. I don't really care for it. 
Um, I personally see it as somewhat of a cop-out, kind of like how I view suicide. However, I consider myself pro-choice. And what does that mean? Well, I consider that, I, I, I realize, and I'll admit that, a couple of years ago, my fiance and I, um, we were at a point in our relationship where if she got pregnant, we more than likely would have gotten an abortion. Um, we did use the Plan B pill a few times uh, for uh, times we weren't sure if um, our other contraceptive methods weren't working. And um, we know that we take the risks every time. But uh, now, more than likely, uh, we would try to not have an abortion. Uh, we feel that we'd be ready to maybe build a family. We don't know. Um, more than likely, I would probably try to coax her into not having an abortion. But, of course, if she felt strongly for it, that's between us. Um, I feel the same way about um, assisted suicide, medically assisted suicide, or even just committing suicide. I don't agree with it. Um, I don't want to say I consider it necessarily a cop-out. I understand that a lot of people have a lot of dark places. I have my own dark places. Um, someone I watched a lot recently committed suicide, apparently, allegedly. So suicide definitely is a something that appeals a touchy subject, but a lot of people like to have a moral about suicide. I think that's, you know, and I feel like, well, well, I agree that a lot of times it's a cop-out. You don't know what's going through someone's head, and I think that they feel they're ready to die. They're ready to die, and if I could do something to prevent that, um, if they talk to me, I would try to refer them to a mental special, mental health specialist, but that's your decision. I feel the same about, um, to a certain extent, disciplining your kids. I feel the same about, to a certain extent, um, vaccinating your kids. My fiance and I have discussed that we probably would be 50-50-ish. We wouldn't have complete vaccination, you know, all of the vaccinations that are available. But we definitely would not be no vaccination, but I feel that um, people who want to have all the vaccinations available for their kids, fine, and people who want to have no vaccinations, fine. Um, I also feel the same way about people who don't want to, uh, for religious reasons, deny certain forms of modern medicine, like blood transfusions for the hope of witnesses. They don't agree with that. They have a synthetic, excuse me, form of transfusion, which fine, that's their, that's their right, their beliefs. It also goes to people who want to use alternative medicine um, instead of modern medicine when their ch children are sick, as well as people who want to try to just pray or exercise demons when their children are sick. Um, I feel that you're also protected under that. That's my view of pro-choice. I don't agree with that. I definitely feel if you're going to use alternative medicine, it should be one that is um, proven to work. And I feel that if you're going to pray it, just shut the fuck up. I can take them to a fucking doctor. Um, and I'll get into the uh, humanity about that later. From a libertarian standpoint, I feel that, again, it's not my decision. I feel that from a libertarian standpoint, it's not the government's decision to define morality. Morality is for us to decide. Um, anyone would argue that morality is relative. A lot of people argue that while morality is relative, there are moral absolutes. I don't necessarily agree with that because I feel that a lot of people who, if there were moral absolutes, then moral absolutes wouldn't be a problem. Um, but that's, again, another topic for another day. Um, but taking that aside, um, I do believe that morality is relative, um, both to what we deem as moral and what we value, to the degrees and the order of how we value them. Um, you might have someone who feels that they're pro-choice or pro-life, they're actually a little bit pro-choice. You have people who are seeing that they're pro-choice, but a little bit more to the pro-life side. You have people who are strictly pro-choice, who are okay with abortions, you know, days before giving birth, and people who are extremely pro-life, who feel that once you fucking come, you can't got to carry the term. Um, to be honest, I feel that there's a lot of moral dilemmas and, and uh, ethical issues when it comes to uh, both abortion and the anti-abortion stance. Um, one thing I would like to clear up, though, before I continue is anyone who is pro-choice is not necessarily pro-abortion. Um, it's kind of like saying that you're pro- uh, someone who is pro-veteran is pro-war, not necessarily just because I support the soldiers doesn't mean I support the wars they go to fight in. Um, I just know that uh, from what I've seen of soldiers and how they have to handle some things, uh, wars are fucking hell. Just 
being in the military seems to be a fucking help for some people. So, yeah, I'll support the soldiers doesn't mean I support the war. Just like that, I'll support law enforcement doesn't mean I support the laws. That doesn't mean I support the actions of every law enforcement officer either. But, again, I digress. Coming back, the uh, morality and ethical uh, issues I have with both sides. I don't agree with uh, abortion all the way through. I think that two, uh, two turns, your first two turns, it should be well, have an abortion, have an abortion. I understand the viability argument too, pulling it back to about one and a half turns. And I think that's a fair way as well. I'd like to see the day when we can have a kind of uh, inter-cervical fetus trans, fetal transplants or removing a fetus and uh, putting it into an incubation chamber, having it uh, spend the last uh, days of its term in uh, there, you know, in a synthesized womb. But uh, we're not there yet, and we may never be there. And this is the option that we have. Um, I also have a problem, though, with people who uh, say that it's murder. Because it's not murder. Um, murder would mean that you're killing a human being. I don't necessarily feel that we're dealing with a human being. It's, it's a gray area. Um, I do feel that after about two, two and a half uh, terms, uh, you know, two and a half trimesters, you get to about the term, the time where it is kind of human being. It can be poor, but even then, I feel that with a doctor's prescription, obviously people can die, or if someone's going to have a stillbirth and they want to not deal with that, um, the option should be available. Um, but again, like I said, doctor's prescription. That's where I feel. But again, that's my view and not necessarily the view of everyone else. But uh, again, to call it murder is pretty rough. Again, that means that we define life and citizenship beginning at conception or fertilization. And that's really difficult, too, because constitutionally, rights begin at, at a birth or naturalization. And you're going to have to amend the Constitution, and you're going to make a whole lot of problems there. Well, I can understand conservatives liking the idea of making it where you're conceived is where you are a citizen, so they'd have a bigger, maybe, stick in the uh, immigration discussion, but... In all honesty, a lot of them would be fucked because a lot of their parents are rich and, you know, they're not always necessarily conceived in the United States. They're conceived in the Bahamas on the honeymoon and shit like that. So, I mean, you got an issue there. And that's the other thing is defining conception. We can't exactly know exactly when you were conceived. We can kind of guess, um, but it's not necessarily a, a strict process. So, we don't know, and that's a, more government to track takes more intrusion into the life of the baby than the, the parents, and it definitely takes away their parental discretion. You're, you're getting in their way and saying, well, we're going to try and determine what's right for this. And it's just false humanity. Um, as I said, you know, a lot of people who are pro-life are okay with someone trying to pray away sickness and the child ended up dying from lack of decent medical attention. And there's, you know... It's not, <laughs> there's no consistency there. You're not in a moral high ground. You're actually a dick. Um, at the same time, I feel that it's way worse to allow your child to die from medical neglect than to abort a child at 19 weeks. Um, again, another argument is that, that abortion is murder, and I feel that that's wrong for multiple reasons. One, if you say abortion is murder, um, you run into this dilemma, and it'll say, if my brother and I are at home, my brother drops dead, and I call the police, and the police show up, I'm a suspect for murder. Why? Because my brother dropped dead for weird reasons, and they're going to investigate to see. They'll cut him open, they'll, they'll uh, do whatever for, sort of uh, investigation they can and see why, they, why he died, and uh, for a while I'll be a suspect. That means that you're going to make the mother and the father suspects for murder. And I don't think a uh, mother who's had a miscarriage needs... To deal with that fucking shit. I've watched my mother have miscarriages, I've watched friends have miscarriages, and no, you're not going to make them a sus suspect of murder, nor are you going to make them a suspect of manslaughter and wrongful death. Same goes with a stillbirth. If we have a stillbirth while trying to give birth, do we have to investigate the entire hospital? Well, I do agree that if there is an issue um, that causes potential harm to babies being born, it should be addressed, but you're going to cause a shit ton of problems in a hospital where other babies are being born. And uh, you're just going to interfere with shit. And again, it's the government intruding. It's government fucking intruding. That's not a libertarian idea. Um, 
another thing that I hear a lot of people say is they take it personal. They look at their child. They look at their child that maybe maybe was born premature. I, I'm a premature baby. I was born a few weeks premature. So I know a lot of people who were born like six, seven, eight weeks. Uh, a lot of parents that say their their children were born that that much premature, you know. And um, they say, "Oh, my baby's not a pile of goo." You say you can abort a baby not much younger than it, you know. That's that's what it means to you. And that's the whole thing. Your baby is what your baby means to you. If at six weeks you think that your baby is a baby and you feel that connection, you are already acting as a parent. Then go right the fucking right a fucking head and treat it like like a baby. You know that's your right. But at the same time, if you're six weeks pregnant, you just found out, and you don't think you can handle it, and you feel you need to terminate the pregnancy, then it's your fucking right, too. And that's the whole point. It's giving you the freedom of choice. It's trusting your agency, your your ability to make rational decisions. And that's the whole point of a libertarian concept, is your ability to make rational decisions. This applies to everything. It applies to all of it. You can insert any, any issue into this... Um, and the libertarian script of, well, it's your right to do it. You are an adult. You can make the choice. Any issue goes with that. It's the same with the typical Democrat and Republican um, authoritarian-esque, authoritarian-esque um, script of why we need to ban it. And you can put any issue in there, and it definitely fit. I've shown this at the Tea Party. They get pissed off um, real fucking well. Uh, I may have already mentioned that in this video. I don't know. But... You have those, those are the issues. Um, and the thing is, too, the way you know it's false and humane, the humanity is the kids are dying. Um, they'll, we'll talk about prayer and not do that. Um, they care so much about children, but they really don't. Go to any countries on the African continent where uh, kids are being killed due to being born HIV or AIDS positive um, because their parents are not given any sort of sexual education, they're not given any sort of resources to have safe sex. Um, you know, shit like that. And that's also attributed to, to a lot of religious influence in African countries and third world countries. And um, a lot of times the religious right is who's being against abortion. Again, like I said, I'm not like the uh, progressives who are trying to stand for abortion because I feel that women are being wrong. Well, I definitely, one of my reasons for supporting the choice is that there are rape victims who may need this resource, and I feel that they shouldn't be robbed of it because a few people might abuse it. I don't think that anyone should lose their rights because a few bad apples abuse it. I think that's why you have laws and uh, punishments for the bad apples to make sure that bad apples aren't kept out and that anyone who considers being a bad apple will say, ah, I don't want to go to prison today, and they won't do it. Um, you won't stop everyone, but it definitely is better than the alternative of just taking it away. Of course, there's also people who say, and I definitely agree that if you ban abortion, you have, uh, you end up having back alley abortions, which are unsanitary, unsafe, and definitely cause more problems. Um, well, again, like I said, I don't necessarily care for abortion, and I do support the freedom of choice, and I'll tell anyone who says, you know what, I wouldn't have one myself, and I honestly would tell anyone who wants to have abortions as the primary means of contraception, good luck having kids when you're 30. Good luck having, good luck living very long. You're doing so much to your body that's detrimental, but uh, that's not for me to decide, that's for them. But anyway, um, it just, it's a topic that is never not going to go away, not anytime soon. It's definitely one that deserves debate, but the debate needs to be about the real parts of the issue, the real depth, the real logic of it, not just turning everything into one-liner and simple fucking answers. If it was that simple, it should have been solved by now. And abortion isn't a simple, easy topic. There are a lot of gray areas we continue to uh, turn to, we continue to find, to debate on, and that's what it should be. That's how government should work. Society should work. We should never 100% agree on anything. We should always be pushing the boundaries to find what can be more perfect. And that's the whole point. Um, but again, as I've already said, I don't like the fact that we turn everything into uh, hot-button issues, one-liner issues. Uh, abortion shouldn't be something you should run on. If you're going to run on it, you should run on it with the big
big plan. Definitely lay out your, your views and how you think government should handle things like that. Um, it shouldn't just be a couple sentences in a debate um, that are just political tagline. But anyway, thank you for listening. Um, if you like what I had to say, please leave a like. Um, if you want to say anything, please comment. It's how we talk. It's how we grow. Uh, to the person, I know I fucked up. Uh, someone ended up commenting. For the first time ever on any of my videos, it was my uh, video on partisanship, and um, I accidentally deleted it. He had said uh, something to the extent of, uh, you know, I totally agree with you, man. Um, you're onto something. It's something very positive, very uh, encouraging, and I want to thank you. You're my first comment. Uh, your name started with a D. I can't remember exactly. I feel so shitty. But uh, I tried commenting. I deleted it on accident, and uh, I ended up posting a comment afterwards saying I'm a dumbass. But uh, thank you for commenting, and I uh, hope more people do. Um, please share my videos, too. I'll be sharing mine, but please share them and subscribe to see more. Um, thank you for listening. It's been Mitch's Rant Time. Have a good night, and uh, stay cool.